Well, I'm going to talk about sustainability and bringing sustainability to your Heritage Week events, whatever the theme is. Um, just a quick summary there. It's going to talk a little bit about our climate goals and what sustainability means in the context of Heritage Week. Sorry, is that kind of echoing a bit or is that just me? No. Okay. Um, and then how you might bring sustainability to your events, um, looking at uh, the way that you talk to your venues and your suppliers, um, how you deal with um, various issues, transport, waste, food, energy, and so on. Oh, okay, that's black for some reason. Sorry about that. Um, I hope you can still see it. Maybe you might, if you see it on the screens at the side there, that was white when I saw it last, but I apologise. So anyway, climate change is a big issue, obviously, as we all know. I'm not going to necessarily get into the details of that. We do need to urgently and legally re uh, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030, which is pretty much tomorrow at this stage. Um, and we need to achieve net zero as a society in Ireland by 2050. We're also at the same time, and in a very related matter, um, experiencing a global biodiversity crisis. Um, and we've got these Sustainable Development Goals, which are UN goals that Ireland has signed up to achieving, 17 of them globally agreed goals for sustainable development that we've agreed as a society we will try and attain by 2030. Um, so what can Heritage Week organisers do? The first thing I suppose the message that I have for you is just think about it, plan for this in advance, bear it in mind when you're planning your events. Even if you're thinking it's not really something that I'm interested in or it's not really relevant to me, just maybe give it some thought, have a chat about it before your event starts and think about what you can do some of the goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, there's a website that has them. If you just Google Sustainable Development Goals, there's a lot of interesting ideas there, how we can achieve. I've kind of picked out, I mean, nearly all of them are relevant for Heritage Week event organisers, but the main ones that, I've been, that I thought were relevant for yourselves as planning events are um, Goal 6, which is achieving clean water and sanitation. Um, goal 11 deals with sustainable cities and communities. Goal 12 talks about sustainable, um, responsible consumption and production. I'm going to get into that in a little bit of detail now. Um, climate action, obviously, goal 13. And then 14 and 15 deal with life below water and life on land, so our biodiversity. Um, I know you'll all be familiar with this, normally presented as a cycle, this idea of um, trying to reduce, reuse, recycle. And what I'm going to think, to ask you to challenge you, maybe, I suppose, to think about for your um, Heritage Week events is to think about it in a, in a wider... Oh. There you go, that's the, way, <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be. So anyway, hopefully it'll stay like that. Um, think about it in, a, in, a, in more of these seven R's. So not just reduce, reuse, recycle, which has become a bit hackneyed, I suppose, um, and it's kind of easy to trot off our tongues and we don't always really think about what exactly it means. But starting at the top right there, rethink. Think about your consumption, think about your event, think about what you're going to use, how you're going to use it, the impact your event is going to have on the environment. And then maybe refuse. Pick a couple of things that you're not going to do. You're not going to consume things. You're not going to use disposables. You're not going to decide to do something um, that might have a damaging event on some part of our environment. Um, just think about it. And then reduce the reuse. Um, think about repair. Um, we want to talk about later some ideas for, for events. I mean, repair workshops, intergenerational discussions are a good idea. So talking to people about, um, I suppose, what you might say, the living history, the, the old ways of doing things, don't throw it away. Think about fixing it. Uh, Regift is something many of us do. Many of us are a bit slightly, we keep it to ourselves when we do it, nothing to be ashamed of. If you get something you don't need, give it to somebody else. And then recycle as the very last of those options. Because recycling is something that we often feel, oh, this grand, I recycles that. It doesn't always have the positive um, environmental impact that we think it does. So it should be something for sure to aim to, something to build towards better, better recycling, but it's not the be all and end all. So the, the, that's sort of a general circular economy. Um, of, you think about it in the circular economy of your event. Um, how, which of those you can address with your event. Um, so the first thing many of you will have is a venue. Um, you'll be thinking about holding an event in a particular place. Um, and suppliers, you might be supply, getting um, people to supply services or goods for your event. So whether your event is a fancy hotel or the local community centre, it's still going to have some things that you can talk to your venue about, about improving the sustainability of, of your event. And just to remember, I suppose, for everybody, this is a journey. Um, you may have done a lot of these things that I'm talking about already. You may be very far down that road. You may be starting your journey and you might think, it's, it's a tricky one, I don't know that much about it, but all progress on this journey is valuable. Um, talk to your venue and your suppliers. Tell them that the environment is important to you and tell them why. That's particularly important for hotels um, or commercial suppliers, people who are, who are selling you something. Tell them what you want, because as customers, they will listen to that. They'll value that. And you can see that, that venues across the country are changing their ways of doing things because the customers are telling them that I'm going to choose you as a venue if you provide these things, and I'm going to choose not to use you as a venue or a supplier if I see that your impact on the environment is negative. Ask them what their policies are on climate or on waste or on energy 
or on biodiversity, just start the conversation. If they look at you blankly, that's fine. The next time somebody asks, at least they'll remember they were asked before. Um, so it's just something to start the conversation. Um, talking then about transport, how will people get to your event? Um, can you hold it in a central location? Can you hold it in a place that's close to public transport? I know that's a challenge in many rural locations, but often it may be close to walking or cycling routes, many of our new greenways. This is the one, uh, the Grand Canal in, uh, near Pulla. Um, providing information on active travel, what is available to people? There's a lot of new um, local bus routes that people aren't, still aren't aware of. So you can provide information on the public transport that's available to people. So in your event promotion material or on your website or on your social media, tell them how you think you can, they can get there. Not how they should, but some ideas of if they want to consider active travel or if they want to consider public transport, here's where they can find the information. Um, consider if it's in a rural location and there isn't public transport or active travel options, consider the possibility that it might be, you might be able to provide a shuttle bus. So one bus that brings 30 people to your event from a central location. Or you might be able to organise carpooling, or you might be able to organise safe and effective uh, lift sharing for people. So almost everything that we do produces waste. Um, we can try and reduce that in every event that we hold. We can try and reduce or eliminate single-use items. Um, we can ask suppliers, will they, will they supply reusable cups, glasses, plates? Many venues are used to this now. You see jugs on the table here. That's something that wouldn't have been common before. Often there would have been bottles of water on the table. Some places there still are bottles of water on the table. It's a simple thing to just, even if that's all you do this year, say, when we hold our conference, we don't want bottled water. We want jugs on the table. That's something that your participants will, will appreciate, something that's easy for your venues to provide, very easy. Um, encourage your attendees to bring their own reusable cups, coffee cups um, or water cups, and I see lots of the reusable cups around, the, around the, table, the, the tables here today. So people, again, are used to doing this. You can put it on your, on your event promotion material. If you have a reusable cup, bring it. It just validates to people that they're going to be facilitated and that you, you are thinking about these things. Um, do you need name tags? We have name tags here today just to let you know that they'll, they'll be collected on the way out. If you could leave your plastic name tags with the ladies on the, on the way out, they'll be reused. Um, so if they are, if you do need to use name tags, just encourage um, reuse of them. Do you need to print programmes? Would one per table do, as we have here today? Um, sometimes for accessibility reasons, it is important to, to produce printed materials, and certainly I'm not saying eliminate that, because a lot of people might not have access to them online. But do you need to print as many of them? Do you need to, do you need to circulate one to every house in your locality? Would one in a central area do? Um, if you're organising something outside, you can ensure segregation for recycling so that your bins are there, um, your recyclables are clearly marked. Um, you can choose local and seasonal food so that you're not serving strawberries in February or blueberries from Peru. Um, think about where your food is coming from. Tell your venue that this matters to you. Um, if you're bu booking food for, uh, for a conference or an event, or even if you're booking tea and coffee, tell, people, tell your venue that you'd prefer if they only used seasonal food. It does make a difference. And often it's very easy for them. Sometimes they're producing what they think we want and we're consuming what they think we want. <laughs> what they think we want. And it's a matter just of having the conversation. Um, you can offer vegetarian and vegan options. That's easy for hotels. But you can tell people why you're doing it as well because there's obviously an environmental impact of, of meat production. You can choose organic and fair trade labels. That's not always simple because there's a lot of these kinds of labels. But certain, some of them are well known and some of them are, are easy to, to navigate. Um, minimise food waste by planning ahead. Uh, Pierce mentioned earlier the use of things like Eventbrite to get numbers. So if you're produce, having an event, say, in a community hall and you're producing food, ask people to register and ask them to let you know if they're not going to make it so that if you're producing food, you only produce the amount of food that you need. Um, and try and plan ahead. There might be something that you can do with leftover food. Maybe a local shelter would take it or um, a local charity might be able to take it, such as Food Cloud, um, and have it reused in a, in, a, in a timely manner. That takes planning ahead, and I know that. Um, ask your venue, do they have natural light? Um, like this room here, lots of venues do. Um, what are their energy efficiency policies? Do they use energy efficient light bulbs, for example? Do they use any renewable power? Um, this sounds like a big long list, um, but it's a matter just of having the conversation, not just saying, are you available on this date and what's your price? There's a couple of things you might want to write down, I don't know, the top five things that are important to you as a group, and just ask the venue. Even if they say, no, sorry, we're not actually able to do that this time. At least you can say, well, that's important to us. Maybe in the future, it's something you might think about and they might be able to consider it for the future. Um, are you using generators? I believe there's lots of variety in generators and you can use a lot of additional electricity almost by accident if you get too much, if you hire one with too much power for your needs. Um, so just thinking about hiring, um, if you're hiring generators, asking about what's needed for the type of event that you have, having the conversation, um, choosing energy efficient um, uh, equipment for AV and so on. And communicate all of this. Always tell your attendees 
even if your event is about the history of, of hurling in Cicinron, or if your event is about, um, I don't know, a totally different topic, um, tell, your, tell your attendees, this is important to you, that as a Heritage Week event, you're concerned about your impact of the event on the, on the environment, and here are the steps that you've taken to address it. You'd be surprised how many people are, are right, right there with you with it, and may choose to come to your event specifically because you've communicated that concern. Um, check for water conservation at the venue. Again, it's a matter of talking to your venue. Promote water conservation as part of your event um, and make sure that your event, of course, has no impact, negative impact on, on water. Um, maybe try and inc incorporate water-based activities and that there's no uh, pollution, litter or discharge um, or disturbance to wildlife um, if you're having a water-based activity. Um, so biodiversity obviously will be a big part of many of your events um, for Heritage Week, so that'll be the key focus, which is fantastic. Even if it's not the key focus of your event, consider how you might be able to promote local biodiversity as well as, as the impacts on biodiversity. So for example, if you're having a talk about uh, a, a local piece of history, consider a natural setting. Can you hold your event outside? Can you organise a nature walk as part of that event? Um, oftentimes people would tell us that they, they, have tr they would love to go to a particular event in an afternoon, for example, but they might have issues with um, access to childcare. Can you organise a parallel event that brings the kids on a nature walk while the adults are listening to a different type of talk if it's not suitable for children or might not be something that holds their attention? Just considering it in advance. Your local heritage officer, your local biodiversity officer, many of you will have them now. They're coming into place and hopefully by Heritage Week many more of them will be in place. Um, contact your heritage officer and your biodiversity officer um, to, to discuss how, the, how these things can be, can be incorporated. And Amanda Pedlow, the heritage officer for Offaly, is here. She's going to talk shortly about what your local heritage and biodiversity officer can do for you in helping to plan these events. Um, if it's an event that you're not, if it's a topic that you're not comfortable with, is there a local conservation NGO, is there a local branch of Birdwatch Ireland, the Irish Wildlife Trust, your local uh, Waters and Communities Officer, that, that can help you with imp incorporating biodiversity to your event. Now, obviously, as I mentioned as well, try not to use materials that harm biodiversity. Balloons are particularly um, harmful if they're disposed of, and it's difficult to dispose of, to dispose of them well. If they get burst outside, um, they get into our waterways, they cause massive harm um, to biodiversity. Um, um, as well as animal welfare, obviously. Um, disposable plastics, likewise, it's very difficult to ensure that they're disposed of properly. Um, check your venue's policies on pesticides. Do they have a policy on pesticides? They might. It's worth, it's for sure it's worth asking. And my key message, I suppose, really, on all of this is communication. Tell people that it's important to you. T talk to your suppliers, talk to the people coming to your event, talk to all the participants, um, your venues, your funders, your attendees. Develop a short sustainability plan that says, here's something we're looking at. If it's, if it's a half a page, it just shows people that you're thinking about it. Um, maybe gives people the coverage or the courage to say, well, this is important to me too. Um, share it on your website. Um, tell your volunteers what your sustainability policies are. And communicate your aims, as I said, as I said in advance, um, on your social media and in your event promotion and at, your, at the events themselves. Um, you can use your power as purchasers, as consumers, as citizens, to highlight the value of local suppliers if they have sustainable policies. Um, you can work with local NGOs and likewise raise their voices through using your voice and always try and keep it um, concise, as, as uh, Paul said, keep it simple. So Living Heritage theme, we, we had a meeting earlier in the week with local heritage and biodiversity officers and we were talking about the um, local authority climate action plans which are being produced at the moment. And one of the actions that was suggested that we should have either a climate, a climate theme for Heritage Week in the future or encourage more climate actions um, for Heritage Week. And the more I thought about it, the Living Heritage theme is perfect in terms of climate action. What we're thinking about, what we're talking about is um, taking our traditions, our stories, our styles, our ways of living from the past, um, looking at how they can produce um, information for us on how we can live in a low carbon future. So we're talking about a much more sustainable way of life that we had in the relatively recent past and not harking back to the past, but showing people how this can be positive and for the future. So looking at traditional skills, um, repairing things, making things with traditional materials, um, looking at sustainable heritage. Um, this could include things like crafts, traditional buildings, thatching, blacksmithing, all of the things that we might think of as being, oh, from the past. Um, but it's, it's quite easy to put a spin on it that says, here, here are the things that signpost us towards a sustainable future. Um, using local food, sustainable, uh, sustainable food, traditional food, which was almost always seasonal because we didn't have um, I don't know, asparagus from Israel and blueberries from Peru until relatively recently. So sustainable um, seasonal eating was very much a, a, a common part of our past, of our living heritage. And it's something that it's very easy for us to turn around and say, well, it's not dusty and musty and something from the past. This is actually how we focus towards a low carbon future lifestyle. 
Um, I won't go through all of these because, as Noran said, he's got a, a guide for 101 um, ideas for events, and some of these are in those. Um, some of the ideas for kids would include um, nature-themed scavenger hunts and, and so on. Um, so we've produced a set of guidelines for Heritage Week event organisers. The, they're on the Heritage Week website, and there's kind of a detailed document that goes through some, in more detail some of what I've said here. Um, and there's also a checklist, a two-page checklist for event planning. So you can, you can download it from the website and bring it along with you if you're going to talk to a venue, just as kind of a little aid memoir to help you to say, well, these are the things that, are, that we're concerned about. You can highlight the particular issues you want to bring and just check off which ones you're doing. You might be surprised, actually, how sustainable your event is already, and that's brilliant. So tell people that. You know, it doesn't happen by accident, and it's, it's part of the, the way that you operate as, as an organisation, so it's important to let people know that. Um, it's available in English and Irish, and it's on the Heritage uh, Week website. It's also on the Heritage Council website under the general guidance and resources. So my contact details are there. Feel free to get in touch at any stage if anybody has any, any questions or queries. Um, but that's, thank you very much.